Oh, hey guys, Justice Curry out for my nature walk and I wanted to talk about kind of a, a topic that's gonna hit home for some of you. Some of you might realize it inside yourself and go, yeah, that's me. And some of you might be in denial or somewhere in between, but we're gonna talk about hoarding toys, action figures, etc. Get ready, because this one's gonna be a little awkward. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna just dive right into this without notes, just walking and free flowing ideas because it's been a topic that I've wanted to talk about for a while. Um, there was a show called Hoarding Buried Alive. I used to love, love, love watching that show, and typically it's people that live in absolute filth and they can barely sleep on their beds and their. Uh, trash and junk and it just keeps compiling and then you know trained professionals and family members loved ones come in and try to clean their place out and there's always um, some common themes that run with people that suffer from these uh, addictions and I started noticing some of these themes within the toy community and things that I battle myself now I'm not a trained professional I am a trained observer ie my law enforcement career uh, obviously, if you're watching this on Facebook, then hi, hi, hi. Make sure you're following me. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and come over to Facebook because I share way more content on this. But I buy and sell toys and I've been doing that for many, many years. Uh, and I've been in every type of walk of life person's house um, to buy the toys, whether they're in their personal collections, in the attics, bait, where, where have you. So I've noticed toy collectors that uh, have the OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, very neurotic with the, how they collect, alphabetized, color-coded, acrylic cases, and that's cool. There's no right or wrong way to do it. it. Looks great. And they have all their stuff categorized, their inventory or collection. And then some guys that, uh, that just let it compile and compile and they have boxes upon boxes from toys they've ordered that they haven't even gotten around to order uh, opening them. Now early on in my collecting career I knew this was an issue because I want like you just to buy everything. You know the buying part is the fun part. Where to put it in the storage and the display that can run into some issues. So I told myself that if I can't display it, then I'm not going to uh, just keep it just to say I have it. So if I wanted a full run of G.I. Joe 25th anniversary, if they weren't on my wall or ceiling, they're just in some tote so I could say I, I own them, then I'm, I'm not doing that. And that's a battle for me because I have a toy room. Some of you do, some of you don't. And, and if you can't, you keep buying stuff, you keep filling it up, and then the walls start closing in and it's hard to get to things. And I've been in collections where you can't barely walk in the guy's toy room. And this is not to show, it, throw any shade on anyone whatsoever, because I have plenty of problems myself and various issues, just like you guys do. And this is just one that uh, I'm specifically talking about it from my observations. And my internal struggles with it. Luckily, you know, I've mentioned this many times, I buy large lots, I resell constantly, I take that money, focus it back into my collection among other things, and that's how I was able to build my entire collection without uh, using real world funds. Now, some things that I've noticed, this, this can be an endless topic, and we'll just keep talking until I run out of ideas, is, People buy toys thinking it's going to be an investment, but they're not really keen on the processes behind selling and the amount of headaches. Most people that come and sell me large collections, uh, they're doing it and I'm paying 30 to 50% of value. And that just depends on the price points, how 
you know, how much I got to clean it, it's organized. There's all sorts of variables to it. But people that, one guy in particular, I'll tell you the story, an old man uh, ran into him at a convention or someone gave me his contact info. I went to his house and he's living on like a million dollar property. Beautiful house um, on a lake. And yet, when you go into the house, there's tiny paths. And he had just bought toys and pond toys all through the 90s thinking this was going to be an investment and he couldn't even sleep in his bed anymore his whole room was packed his basement his garage everything was jam-packed full of toys thinking this was going to be an investment well now comes time to start cashing in on his investment this is only last year 2022 um and he's going oh my goodness this is a pain in the butt to individually sell uh, individually wrap, photograph, price. I mean, it's a lot of work. And that's why people sell me collections. They don't want to deal with all the time that it takes to do it. Plus, you have so many other factors involved with taxes and eBay fees. And I've talked about this many times. You sell something that's worth 100 bucks on eBay and say you got it for free or whatever, you're only, after fees and taxes, you're only getting $63. Um, now there's other variables and write-offs and whatnot, um, but people don't understand that on top of the, the listing it. So they think it's an investment. They go to sell and go, uh-oh, this ain't what I thought it's going to be. Then they reach out to resellers, toy shops and go, what? You're only going to give me, you know, a lot of other shops only give you 20 to 40% um, of value. And they're like, oh, but they do it sometimes or or they sit on it and that's the other thing i i don't want my collection to ever be a burden to my family if i unexpectedly pass away now i've heard of some arguments well well i'm gonna have it all itemized and and spreadsheets your freaking loved ones aren't going through thousands of items in a spreadsheet where prices change monthly to figure out values they're gonna reach out to someone like me and go Hey, this is how much it's worth. How much can you give me? And I go, all right, this is straight up. This is what I can do. Um, so that argument, eh, yeah, it could help with understanding and not getting ripped off by someone with no scruples coming in there and giving them pennies on the dollar. Um, so that's one way. Another thing is they think their family or their grandchildren or their, even their kids are going to want this stuff. And let me tell you from experience, you know, my dad worked on automobiles, snowmobiles. That's what I did growing up with him. I despised it. I didn't care about that stuff. I learned a lot. He was a handyman. But that's not what I was passionate about. And chances are, I mean, there's always exceptions. Your kids and grandkids, loved ones, aren't going to be passionate about a toy line from your childhood that doesn't resonate with them currently. You know, your kids are going to want the Pokemons and the, the electronics and the things of their era that their friends groups wants. Again, there's always exceptions. And if you have kids that collect along with you, awesome. Legos, timeless. Maybe that's why Lego holds on to those values. Um, so, eh, that's not a good mentality. Uh, the bottom line, too, as we're going on all these tangent adventures that I'm talking about, uh, is if you have a serious problem and many of you have confided in me and I've been in homes and there's no judgment on my part that you have hoarding like behaviors these problems are not going to go away by themselves uh, they you need professional help you got to research this to learn how to get better because again they don't just magically disappear and many collectors I've noticed myself included um, we have addiction problems. I've been sober from alcohol for 10 years now. Uh, a couple beers wasn't in my uh, wasn't in my vocabulary. It was full throttle or nothing. And just like some of you may be able to collect uh, a couple items and be good, other of you are full throttle, and there's no there's no controlling it, and it just accumulates, which turns into real world problems by not making ends meet financially, destroying relationships with loved ones. Um, so there's a ton of resources out there when it comes to hoarding like behavior. 
and you don't have to find a hoard. I mean, we even joke about it. Uh, there's a Facebook group called Toy Hoarders. The documentary that I was in on Amazon, I highly suggest you watching it, called Plastic Crack. Why Plastic Crack? Because crack's addictive. Toys are addictive. Duh. Um, we, we're all using the same plastic uh, retail therapy. That's a real thing. You know, women go out and buy clothes and shoes and whatnot. Guys, you know, some guys collect sh shoes themselves or watch sports or collect sports memorabilia incessantly or tools. You can be addicted to anything. I'm just talking about a small little thing. And there is endorphins that go off in your brain every time you order something, every time you um, purchase, get at home. But those things disappear. And I've noticed from my personal experience that I don't feel happier owning a $5,000 toy versus a $10 toy. Like, they're both fun in the beginning and then life goes on and, and it's nice to look at sometimes, but I get equal pleasure out of both. Which is why when people reach out to me and say, hey, I got, um, or I saw on the back of your one of your videos, you have the store display something, and would you take X amount for it? Even though I wasn't selling it, I go, well, I've had it for many years. I might be doubling my money. Yeah, sure, why not? And I don't mind it going to the new home. Um, whereas other guys go, well, maybe it'll go up in value, or I overpaid and I can't lose money on it. So they're stuck with it. And granted, they'll be stuck with it forever. Uh, another thing I noticed is one guy went to a storage unit. He hadn't opened it since the 90s. And he was, again, you know, in the 70s or whatnot. It was one of the greatest scores I ever had. But as I was pulling stuff out, making a big pile, he wanted to make sure everything's complete. And like, I gotta have all the pieces. I gotta find all the pieces before I sell it. And I, but he had been saying that to himself for 30 years, like he was never going to. And I had to break it down to him and go, look at this monster pile. If you had to sort each one of these Death Stars and Millennium Falcons and whatnot and find the pieces before you sell it, it'll be months, years. This is an overwhelming task. And that's the thing people realize is, or it's hard for them to click, time. Time is more valuable on earth than anything, money, property, what have you, items, our time is limited. And when I buy things to resell it, I'm, you know, I'm paying less because it's my time to list it, PMs, deal with things, deal with issues that might arrive, lost mail, what have you. And I don't mind that because that's my happy place in life. But when you're talking tens of thousands of items and you're going, how am I going to sell, even if you were able to sell 20 a day you you'll never get to the end of the the bottomless pit um and i've developed certain things what i do as a reseller when i get massive piles of things that are under 30 dollars a piece to sell it's not worth my time to nickel and dime on ebay just to make a couple bucks individual listings so i find other me's out there which i know a ton of them that set up at flea markets and toy shows <clears throat> excuse me and I go, hey, I'll basically sell you this giant lot for the price I paid for it. And most of them go, oh, heck yeah. And then they can take the time to do it. And I just save the cream of the crop, things that are worth over $30. And that's worth my time to individually sell. That's just one thing that I've used along. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm going up hills and whatnot, talking incessantly with no water, mind you. And I'm starting to sweat. I'll edit that part out later. Um, and it can be a shameful thing. Most people don't like alcoholics. The first thing in recovery is to admit that you're an alcoholic. And for years, I kind of knew deep down, but I always lied to myself and said, well, I'm not on the streets. I'm not beating my wife. I'm not poor. I'm not an alcoholic. But I was. I was hungover for most every morning. You know, my weekends were shot. Instead of spending time with the kids, I was spending time recovering from drinking hard. 
And it was only until I finally surrendered it to the Lord and said, I am an alcoholic. I can't stop this on my own. Uh, I was finally rid of that horrible demon. And we all tell ourselves lies. And that's just how some of us survive. But this is a fun hobby. Toys, action figures, the collecting part is the fun part. Sometimes the selling part is the overwhelming part. And guys get overwhelmed with just a massive collection. And they kind of roughly go, man, this took me forever to, to buy. What am I going to do with this? And they don't have an end game. Like, even when I get to a certain age or my health was failing, my wife knows who to reach out among my friends list. And she'll probably sell it for 50%. I've made arrangements with many of those guys. And that's fine because they'll be spending all the time selling my collection and giving them those funds to my, my family. And I'm fine with that, I don't care. Obviously, I'm not gonna care, I'm in heaven. <laughs> um, what are some other topics that I want to talk about regarding hoarding and some of the things that we tell ourselves to rationalize our behavior? Um, that we'll get around to it, that it becomes overwhelming and going, I. You're never going to get to that point where you have the time to start selling it. And it starts filling up rooms. And just like the scenario I gave with the old man that bought all that thinking it was going to be his retirement and then started realizing this is too monumental and all of a task. It'll take another few years to sell off piece by piece. He started letting go because he realized this is gonna be a burden for my family. I want my grandkids to, that's what he was telling me, almost with a tear in his eye, I want my grandkids to come over and not think I'm a crazy old guy, grandpa, and for people to walk into my, and there's no smell or anything, but you just, there's no area for people to play, no guest, I mean, it was, how could you work on projects, do anything, because you're surrounded by toys. Unfortunately, he picked some of the wrong horses as far as toy lines, to think that there were going to be investments such as ugh, 90s Star Wars, starting lineup, Spawn. Now, if he was buying factory cases of, you know, G.I. Joe and, and whatnot, he would have been a little better wrestling. He would have been a little better position, but he had some decent stuff. I was able to buy some of it. But another thing in people's minds, he had thousands Sorry, man. I'm, if you're watching this video, no one knows who you are. Um, he, and I would never tell. He had thousands of 12-inch Star Wars um, Princess Leia and Hoth gear dolls. Thousands. Or who knows, he paid probably next to nothing in the 90s for them. Got trailer loads of them and stored them. Well, in his mind, he should be getting you know, $5 to $10 a piece because he's showing me sold listings on eBay for two listings that sold for $20. But then I have to show him, look at only two sold within um, two months. That's what eBay's history is. And currently there's like 30 of them listed for 15 to $30. Ain't none, no other ones are selling. So that shows you that there's not a demand for this. So me even paying a dollar per figure, I'd be hesitant at. I mean, maybe I could and I'd just flip them for five bucks a piece, three to bucks a piece, but that would require me renting U-Hauls and getting trailers and it just, it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't make sense in my, how I do things, makes sense in other people. But he's like, nope, nope, nope. In his mind, it's worth more. And people have attachments. There is a legit thing, especially among hoarders, of sentimental attachment. And when I buy toy collections, and people are liquidating it all, and people have various reasons for selling. They're not passionate about it. It's their kid childhoods thing. They don't collect toys. Um, they just want to cash out and be done. Financial reasons, they get in dire straits and said this is not important no more. Um, they all sorts of reasons why people sell and sorry, this is why I'm walking I get in better shape um, so with sentimental attachment I tell people 
keep a few people like don't liquidate your entire if you're still collecting toys and this was your favorite gi joe figure don't sell it keep a few things but if your whole house is filled with toys and you're attached to each and every single one of those then you got a problem <laughs> then you got a problem because there's memories attached to things and I remember, you know, I was with my, my kid and we were at Toys R Us and we bought this together. It was a bonding moment. I'm sure you have multiple toys in your collection just like that. But unfortunately, it's not always the case. Among collectors, this is the mentality. Me, certain toy lines included. You buy one to display, one to just keep, and one just in case. Or I could be getting that wrong. One to open, one to leave in package and one just in case so you buy three of everything pre-orders now me personally i don't do that i buy multiples all the time but i buy multiples because i'm going to keep one save the other three or four of them wait till they double in price resell them and essentially i like that because it feels like i get the figure for free um and i and things in my head that make things easier for me to sell is if I buy an item for say $10, now it's worth 30. And if a friend comes over and goes, hey, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. In my mind, I'm not going, well, it's worth 30. I'm gonna go, I doubled my money. Here, take it, take it, take it, it's gone. I know where it's gonna go to a good home. And oftentimes that's the thing that pushes people over the edge when I'm at a, a person's house and I'm getting a big pile together, or I'm buying their collection and they're going, they're so attached. Maybe they've never sold a single thing in their whole life. Um, and what pushes them over the edge is when I tell them, these are sitting in boxes that you haven't seen in 30 plus years and mice are eating them and there's water damage and some are maybe mildew because you don't have a dehumidifier in your basement. No one's, this is just gonna get worse and people, your family member is gonna throw these away. Instead, why don't you let me find a home for them, someone that's gonna treasure them all over the world, because that's where I ship all over the world, and I'm gonna find someone who's gonna cherish it, like it, put it on the shelf, look at it, maybe play with their kids, and normally that, because it's true, has the light bulb moment in their head going, you know you're right, you know you're right. Um, the storage locker scenario, where I did buy a, a big chunk of it, but he wasn't ready to sell the last chunk. And it was still a full storage locker filled with toys. And I was pulling mint on card, Indi vintage Indiana Jones figures, and Star mint on card Star Wars. It was, it was beautiful. It was, again, Kenner, two, Kenner Aliens, the big one. Um, great, great collection. But he had so much more that he was unwilling to part with because he's thinking, ah, someday I'll get to it, someday. And I kept bugging him over the course of the next few months, like, hey, let's go back, let's do round two. And he just kept putting me off. And then he eventually stopped answering my calls. And about a year later, I found uh, one of our mutual friends reached out and found out the guy couldn't make ends meet, lost the storage unit, and it ended up getting thrown away. It was sad, it was real sad. Even when I was in there, water had gotten in, he had everything stored in cardboard boxes. Things were already getting destroyed. And none of us are taking any of this stuff to the grave. And eventually, someone's not gonna care about mad balls. You know, if they don't relaunch the line and none of our kids and grandkids care about those kinds of things, then the mad ball that we go, oh, this is worth 50 bucks, it won't be worth jack squat and it's gonna end up in a landfill because 40 years from now, ain't nobody cares. It's just like the scenario I give with tin toys. Um, once that generation starts dying off, the values start plummeting because it's all based on supply and demand. Demand goes down, supply goes up, prices go down. And that's gonna happen with a lot of our, our toys. Caveat, Star Wars. Star Wars will live on forever. And hopefully other toy properties such as He-Man and G.I. Joe will live on through our kids, but maybe not, I don't know. But that doesn't matter. Uh, most collectors don't care about the means of finance or what it's gonna be worth. It is the fun, the nostalgia, the thrills, the talking with other toy collectors, 
but it can quickly turn into a nightmare if not properly wrangled in and setting internal rules. What I tell people is budget. I often have people that find me on social media or YouTube and, and go, hey, I know you buy toys or sell toys and I want, you know, these X amount of G.I. Joes and they're going because they're brand new in the collecting thing. And I'm going, I know you're you're super energetic. You want all these things, but slow down. Half the fun is the collecting and finding and getting the pieces. If you buy all the whole collection and get your whole run, 82 to 94 or whatever, in a few months, then you reach the finish line and you go, what's next? What's next? And then you jump to another, maybe men on card, maybe knockoffs, maybe bootlegs. And, and that's what we have as collectors. Uh, we tend to lily pad from one thing to, and I'm taking that term lily padding from addiction because often drug users oftentimes will uh, jump from one drug to the next to try to kick it, but they're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's not really fixing anything. Um, but having end goals, thinking about your future self, not lying, going, this, my kids are going to love this. There's even funny like memes are like little cartoons. Uh, I wish I could find it on social media. If I do, I'll insert it right now of a guy opening his garage door and it's jam packed, filled with toys. You can't pull a car in and there's a kid standing next to him and he goes, someday, son, this will all be yours. That kid ain't going to care about that. He's just sick of parking outside because he can't pull into the garage because the toys are overtaking you. You know, it's not going to want to resell all that stuff. Um, so it's, it's a complex thing. I know it's a tip of the iceberg. There's so many other tangents and I'm sure I'm wrong on a few things or there's exceptions, but I'm painting with a broad paintbrush. A lot of these things I'm talking about apply to the mass majority of people and there's always the small amount that it doesn't apply to. So if you're still watching, which probably only two people are and that's okay, um, think about it. Think about setting uh, budgets in your own mind. Does it make you happy? What about your future self? What's going to happen to it when you're gone? Have a person in place, a trusted source that you can tell wife, girlfriend, mom, uncle, aunt, cousins, if I die, here's the contact information of so-and-so. I've already arranged it with them. If I die in a car accident, call them and they'll take care of you and talk about those. I've purchased, let's see, four collections in the recent two years that were from deceased friends or people that were um, strangers to me that I, I got their collections after they, they passed away. And it's an honor, it's bittersweet sometimes because I'm not as excited for getting the, the giant score and, and whatnot. And I typically always keep a piece or two for my personal collection because I'm like you. There's a story to almost every single one of those pieces in my collection. And there's a memory attached to it that goes beyond the toy. And what's more important to me, and should be you guys too, preach it, is the toys are not what matter. It's our relationships. And if our relationships are getting isolated and estranged because of the toys, then you got a, a problem. Um, but toys also bring us together. The conventions, the talking with people online, sharing these experiences um, with other people, looking at the halls and, and talking about variants and just all the sorts of topics uh, that come with toy collecting. I've met so many awesome people. I've met some crazy people and we're all crazy thing I like to say uh, is everyone is normal until you really get to know them. There ain't no such thing as a normal person. We're all at some shade of uh, uniqueness and strangeness and weirdness and we're all battling our own personal demons. Some are self-evident. You can look at a crackhead and go, yep, that's his sin because it's written all over his face with sunken cheekbones and some are hidden that are things that people battle within them personally. 
depression, addictions, all sorts of things, womenizing. Um, another thing that I just dealt with recently, again, if you're watching, no one's going to know that's you, but a good friend of mine that I've known for eight years, he, uh, he goes through a cycle where he buys massive amounts of toys, high-end toys, tens of thousands of dollars of toys, gets into a financial or a relationship issue and ends up selling them all, everything. And then starts the process right over again. It's called purging. When you think you're gonna fix the issue by just getting rid of everything or just like addiction, I'm gonna go cold turkey. There's gotta be some other structures and scaffolding that you have in place internally friendships sponsors what have you to help you along that journey because these problems don't go away by themselves well, where i was getting with this is he's got a sizable collection obviously he reached out to me things are falling apart he's developed a very nasty hardcore drug addiction and is a different human being than i remember and it's it's hard it's hard and I'm straight up with people when I'm buying collections I'm like this is how much I can pay for this this is how much I can pay for this and if it works for you awesome if it doesn't no hard feelings ever ever I've had too many uh, bridges burnt through over the years that money complicates things and can change people's I mean it's the root of all evil money is a dangerous dangerous beast and watching him struggle, I mean, I talked with him for four hours at length, not just about toys, but real world things and trying to help him the best I could and give him encouragement and talked about, you know, my personal faith and how you're not going to just kick a hardcore drug addiction magically by yourself. Um, it's complex, but like I mentioned before, there's similar themes among all of us with addiction to toys and some of you can have those two beers two toys be all right but others it's bottles of whiskey and cases of beer and it overtakes your life destroys everything that you hold dear and when it gets to that but if the goal is not to let it get to that point or even if you're deep neck deep into that and you don't see a way out there's always a way out now I love to preach to people and this is where I'm gonna lose half of you so there's only two now there's only one I personally tell my story on how I kicked alcoholism and how my faith of the Lord Jesus is the only way that I know because man's way man has fallen they're always gonna let you down pharmaceuticals therapy yeah they can help you to a certain extent but kinship and we're not on this earth for no reason. We all have purpose. No matter if you're a janitor or the president, there's, we're all the same. We all deal with sin and we all have our circles of influences. So use these toys as a power of change within yourself and positively affect others around you. I love giving toys away. I love seeing smiles on people's faces, kids, adults, what have you. This collection, this hobby means so, so much to me. And it's totally changed my life for the positive. But I see glimpses into the negative daily. If you're on social media, if you've been around toxic people, you know what I'm talking about. So get those negative influences out of your life. That's why my block list on Facebook is probably in the four hundos or more by now. Um, when you put yourself out there, people, it's, people love to come after you. Um, and people that are suffering with their own personal struggles will make it their, uh, their vendetta to bring you down to their depths. And I'm not perfect. I will own up to the mistakes I make. I make them daily and I'm trying to always improve myself. And that's why if I can offer some words of encouragement to you, some guidance, some love, some insight. And don't just stop here. If this just got your feet wet with the topic, Google search, YouTube search, how to stop hoarding, therapy around me. Go 
to church. Ask for prayer. He'll take it away if you want it. I'm telling you. If you surrender, that was the hard part. We're all thinking we're in charge of our own destiny. We don't need anybody else. We can do it ourselves. No, you can't. No, you can't. You'll just replace it with some other addiction. So this has been Story Hour, hoarding edition with Justice Curry. I know when I hit that stop button, I'm going to think about 20 other topics, but that's okay. Put your comments down below. I'm curious to think and read. I mean, I read every comment that I get. So I'm curious to hear your input um, and expand on any topics that I might not have covered in greater depth or things that work for you personally because I'm just giving you what's worked for me. But what works for me doesn't work for everybody else. I love you. Be kind to one another. This world's a, a crazy place, so don't make it any worse. Forgive others. Just forgive. Let it go. It ain't worth it because there always will be someone that wrongs you. Back to life. All right. Love y'all.